Hey peeps, welcome back to Project Anonymous and in today's video, we're going to make a laser stacked mural. So let's get to it. So what is a laser stacked mural? It's basically stacking different layers of thin wood on top of each other to create a scene in a kind of a picture frame. So that's what we're going to do today. Yeah, and we'll use our Montport laser to cut it out, light burn, and inkscape to design it. Ready to get to it? Let's go. So I sketched out a design that I want for our mural, but it's not in the format we need. So we'll use inkscape to create different layers for each of the wood pieces. So now I'll go to document properties so I can resize our guidelines. I'll make it four by six inches. From there, I can resize my image. I'm going to go to my layers tab and I'll rename my image layer. Now I'll create a new layer, which will be the first layer in our mural. And I'll use the Bezier tool to trace it out. Since this layer is hidden under others, I can't see this part, so I'll guess how it looks. And I'll make each line go to the way end of the document, and I have my node snapping tool on so I can do this. And I don't want my line to be dashed, so I'll fix it in the fill and stroke tab. It's just easier to tell where to curve it when it's not dashed. Now I can use my node selection tool to correct the design. Now I'll get rid of my line by pressing Shift X and press a color to give it a fill. I'll go back to my layers tab so I can hide this layer so I can do my next layer. I accidentally had it below my layer one so I'll just move it above it. I'll go back to my Bezier tool and repeat this process on the remaining layers. I'll hide my image layer and these are the finished results. Now we need to export our design so we'll hide all the layers except one and export each individually. We'll go to File, Export. We'll click on Export Selected Only. And we can save it as a PNG. And now we can save the rest of the layers. And we got an error having us rename our previous layer so we can save the next because you can't have two of the same file names. And here's all our layers. So now that we have our design, we'll go over some of the materials that we'll need for this project. First of all, we got this nice little wooden framed thing from our hobby store. And we've got some hobby wood that we can laser cut out on the laser. Now this is really thin stuff. This is like 16th of an inch thick material, which is really easy to cut on the laser. And then we've got some leftover African mahogany that I wanted to use. It's a little bit thicker, about 3 30 seconds, but you want to make sure that your wood isn't too thick that the laser won't cut. So this is going to be perfect. And then finally to cover the whole thing to keep everything nice and dust free, we're going to go ahead and cut a piece of acrylic that is 2.4 millimeters thick, which looks like about 330 seconds. Now, before we close up everything, we're going to go ahead and stain some of these pieces of wood with some different stain colors to kind of give it, you know, a little bit, a little bit extra. And then I really like this color of wood that we may just put like a linseed oil on. That'll look really cool with the contrast. All right, now that we're in Lightburn, we're gonna go ahead and draw the inner diameter of our frame that we can also use to cut our acrylic. So just gonna use a simple rectangle and we measured that out at four and 11 sixteenths by six and 11 sixteenths, which in decimal form is 4.6875 by 6.6875. And now that we have that, we're gonna go ahead and import our first layer. And we're gonna go ahead and resize this. Now what we can do is trace this image. Get rid of the image. And now our tracing, what we're gonna do is put it on a, another layer. 
and then we can start stacking them on top of each other. And to align them, we can use the Align tool. We select both of these layers. We can go to this Alignment tool, center them, and then align them at the bottom. And now it's perfectly aligned. Now to the next layer. This may not work. So what we need to do, because we made this layer white, there's nothing that the tracing tool can use for an outline. Even though we can see it, there's no contrast between. So we need to go back into our design, our SVG, and change this color into something uh, usable. There we go, that'll work a lot better. So now I'm just gonna line everything and then configure my settings and then we can hook up to the laser. And I have quite a few more passes on our African mahogany because it has a much thicker wood and a much harder wood. So it takes a little bit more for the laser to cut through. Everything else will get a single pass. All right, let's hook up to the laser. First layer is a coat. So I forgot to turn it into the right layer output. But no big deal, we can just flip the wood over and no one's gonna see that. Did not cut through. So I accidentally moved it to see if it was cut through. That's kind of the problem that I'm having with laser cutting is I never know when it's actually fully through or not. So by the time I touch it, it moves out of place and I can't redo it. What I can do is just easily follow this up on the bandsaw because it's Almost through. Now I'm just going to lightly sand all these with 100 grit sandpaper. And what this does, it will prep it for the stain as well as clean off all of the burn marks. Time to stain. We've got this gray water-based one for this, but it actually looks really good when you coat it with like red oak after. So we'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. Nice tight fit for sure. So I think our mural turned out really cool, but we do have one improvement we can make or easier way to do this. And what is that? Yeah, so we ended up exporting each layer in Inkscape and then importing that and tracing it into Lightburn when we could have just taken the entire SVG that we had made and just brought the SVG and imported that into Lightburn. And I confirmed later that it brought over each layer just like it would have been traced. So we went through a few extra steps that we didn't need to do. We could have just brought the whole SVG over and sized it appropriately and we would have been just fine. Both ways worked, but the other way would have been a little bit of a time saver. Yeah. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you get reminded every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.